Yo, what's going on today? Home Slice down here in my hood with my chains on. Uh. Okay, dude, you look ridiculous. Take Come that on. Off. Take that off. Hey, everybody, it's Dustin here from DG's Pro Tech and Listwool. I um, want to get another episode of D DG's TV off to you. Today, we are talking about the notorious 3.5 liter EcoBoost that Ford brought out, its trials, its tribulations, um, and kind of what makes it so notorious. We had a customer come in for a very common complaint on their 3.5 liter EcoBoost. This engine is in an F-150 and it's in the Ford Edge, the Ford Explorer and a lot of other Ford applications now. The reason it is is because really it's a great engine. We have excellent economy, excellent power um, and if the vehicle is taken care of, really they're a long lasting engine. Um, power per displacement, there's not many engines that come this close. So let's talk first about what makes them as great as they are without being biased, and then we'll talk about really what makes them so notorious and what makes them problematic, because there's a whole other side of that coin that we should also talk about. So this customer came in with the timing chain out of phase code. So it's telling me that the correlation between your intake and exhaust camshafts, remember, I, sh I should go back one step. This is a dual overhead cam V6 with variable cam timing on both independent camshafts. It's also turbocharged with a twin turbo setup. It's also high pressure direct injection gasoline. Um, so a lot of things going on in this engine, which is what makes it so powerful for such a small block. Um, Common concerns are this is a high performance motor. This is, you know, getting into what was race car technology only a few short years ago. Um, it needs to be maintained meticulously. In my professional opinion, this engine should have synthetic oil only and it should have its synthetic oil changes done not at the extreme interval of 15,000 kilometers like the oil change minder on the dash will allow you to do. Um, if those things are taken care of and the maintenance is impeccable, these trucks last a long time and we don't see some of the common failures like turbocharger failures, turbocharger bearing failures and timing chain stretch problems as they're commonly concerned. This customer came in of course with the timing chain stretch problem and what it really is is actually wear between the links of the timing chain so if you can picture a whole bunch of links like this and as they wear due to lack of maintenance they they wear into each other and a little bit of wear in each timing chain physically allows the chain to be uh, longer than it should be the timing chain tensioner setup in the system cannot take up all of that slack and eventually the timing the timing gears on the camshaft side are allowed to float further than they should actually be able to do now the computer will pick up on this because it's very advanced and it will actually start to phase one or more of the phasers to try and bring your base timing closer to zero. Once it goes outside a calibrated limit, it'll set the check engine light, throw the truck into lock power mode and you'll be into a shop like ours for repair. Now if the customer chooses to still ignore further, because it can be a cost repair, it's not as scary as you'd think, but it can be, um, eventually what we've actually seen is the truck will actually jump time. And in a case like the other EcoBoost in our shop today, it jumped time to the point where pistons and valves have collided because this is an interference engine and now that customer needs major, major engine repair. So, a um, couple base things you can see in this engine. Of course, we are twin independent variable cam timing, which means we have a solenoid that runs this intake, a solenoid that runs this exhaust, and again over here for this intake and this exhaust, so they can be variably advanced and retarded on the fly. We have a port, and I'll show you the parts over here in a second, for a high pressure direct injection. Basically, this is your injection pump like you'd find on a diesel, but in gasoline world, it's a little lower pressure, maximum 2 to 2200 PSI. It runs high pressure lines down here to your high pressure rails, that are again gasoline, that have direct injectors into the cylinder. By using direct injection, we can be extremely efficient in the use of our fuel and the delivery of our fuel to get excellent atomization. Now, some customers will argue with me in this video and say, you know, the EcoBoost that I've driven or from my friends that have had one have said it's not that efficient of an engine. It really doesn't get that much better fuel mileage than their 5 liter F-150, which is the competition motor within the same brand. And I hear you. I have driven an EcoBoost over a long period of time. If you use an EcoBoost and you stay out of the actual boost, it can be more eco. However, if you drive one of these trucks and you enjoy driving a vehicle, you won't want to drive out of the boost. You'll want to be into the boost because they're a really fun engine to drive. Of course, as we up boost in an engine, we have to up fuel 
to have the correct air fuel ratio. And that's where those trucks really don't get a whole lot better fuel mileage than their V8 competitors, you know, maybe slightly better, but it's when they really shine when they're into the boost. And that's why their towing numbers are in excess of 11, 12, almost 13,000 pounds towing capacity. And personally, they'll do it. So here we are over on the bench guys with the part from this EcoBoost that we were just talking about a second ago. Now to give you an idea, if you go back in a couple of our videos, we did a very similar video on the 5.4 liter Triton F-150. So you're gonna see a lot of the same layout and we'll kind of make some references together as we go. So this is your basic timing chain layout that's been recently removed from the truck. So you have your timing chain guides, you have your timing chain tensioner, you have your where your crank, um, crank gear would be, running your timing chain up and over bank one, camshaft down around an idler and up over bank two camshaft and then back to our crankshaft now on the 5.4 we run two chains to do the same thing on this because we run one chain we have to run this idler in the middle downside that i personally and professionally have with this system is really we do see timing chain wear and what happens is because this tensioner will plunge out as far as it can keeping tension on the the chain as it can this chain ends up slapping a lot because there's no tension over here. Um, in, a, in a better setup, and actually in the new 2018 F-150 EcoBoost, they've, they've addressed this by putting a second tensioner here to take up any extra slop. Also, the chain's a little lighter than I'd like to see for this engine design, but it is what it, ha it is, and with proper maintenance, we don't see problems with this. So over here, another component that's important, and it's, it's nice to see, is we have our old timing chain compared directly alongside a brand new Ford timing chain. They are perfectly lined up, and though it doesn't look like much, you have about a link, link and a half longer in the old chain, and it's not that this chain has another link, that's your physical wear that this tensioner over here I was just talking about is trying to take up. That much slop is all it takes for these to get out of phase, set that correlation code with timing and cause issues. So the repair, and it's actually been made a TSB, a technical service bulletin by Ford, is to disassemble, and replace the chain. Now, in my opinion, again, we should go in and verify that everything else is not worn excessively before we just simply put a chain in it. A lot of times you'll find your tensioner has gone out past the maximum number of clicks and therefore it cannot tension and it's probably been bouncing off the bottom of that piston in the plunger. I'd highly recommend a new time and chain tensioner. Retail on this from Ford as of today is $65. It, it's not, it'd be silly not to replace this component while we're in there. We don't see a gasket, a phenolic gasket, like we did in the 5.4 there. We also don't see a plastic housing. This is steel. There is no warpage here. We very rarely lose any leakage here like we did see in the 5.4 there. So this is updates that Ford has obviously made to their systems. A Couple other neat components we'll show you just because we're disassembled. This is your high pressure injection pump. It is mechanical. It means it runs off its own separate cam lobe driven off the actual intake camshaft. There's a square lobe there that's just sitting here and going pulse, 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 pulse. So low pressure comes in at, you know, 50 PSI, give or take, and high pressure exits based on demand from the regulator to ramp anywhere from 500 to up to about a maximum 2200 PSI. Now 2200 PSI doesn't sound like a whole lot when we're running gasoline systems upwards of 25,000 PSI, but it's because gasoline's so volatile. 2,000 PSI gasoline pressure really is all you need to do extreme uh, advancements in horsepower and get that good direct injection atomization. Um, really that's all I've got guys. The last thing I guess we should talk to back over here in the truck is the turbochargers. Um, we talked about the fact that the EcoBoost can get great efficiency provided you stay out of the boost. They are an internally gated turbocharger. So the wastegate is built into the housing of the turbocharger. Max boost under a stock application, you're going to see about 13 to 15 PSI, which is a lot for a little truck like that. Um, that said, a lot of people, when they start to try and get that economy, they stay out of the boost, driving it accordingly. The problem is then the wastegate never opens because it never hits max boost. That same customer then tows a trailer, you know, maybe their RV once in the summer, the waste, they, they hit max boost, the wastegate opens, and because it hasn't opened and cycled a bunch, it'll be seized in the housing, and then we have stuck open wastegate issues. So the, the turbocharger, as you see here, located right on the end of the exhaust manifold, and there's a left and right, this is just an easier one to see, has a wastegate diaphragm that will open that mechanical wastegate, which is internal to the turbocharger housing, around that 15 PSI boost. It starts opening it at five PSI, but max opening at 15 PSI. And if you've been driving it for efficiency and it hasn't moved for a while, and then it goes to full cycle, 
it may stick there. And then one turbocharger may be working correctly, the other not, and then you'll get a weird, like, uh, I call it the, the whining dog, the ar, 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 ar noise, because one wastegate is trying to cycle when it's stuck. So that is our number one cause with turbocharger failures. Customer will say, you know, I had an EcoBoost, it was great, but I had all these turbocharger and timing chain concerns. Really, if we just cycle those turbochargers once in a while by driving it the way you want to drive it in the first place, we don't see a lot of turbocharger failures. And full circle now, we'll talk about the maintenance again. If you keep good quality oils and filters in these trucks at the right time periods, um, not necessarily that extended 12 to 15,000 mileage. I tell guys 5,000 K on regular oil, 8,000 K on synthetic in these. Treat them like a diesel because really they are almost like a little small diesel and this EcoBoost will last you a long, long time and you won't have to come see us for a repair like this. That said, we'll wrap this up with, if you do have a concern like this with your EcoBoost, come see the experts here. We're using Ford IDS top of the line scan tools to be able to diagnose these and get them repaired at a cost that's gonna be as low as it possibly can for you, the end customer. That's it for us today at DG's Pro Tech here, guys. Follow us on Facebook, watch these videos, tag your friends so they know all the good things that we've got going on here, and we'll see you next time.